are back in the world of chemistry today and we're really excited because this is a classic experiment showing you the speed of chemical reactions and how temperature of solutions affect the speed of reactions. This is an iodine clock. Let's go. This is Destructive Creativity, this is Luke the Science Guy, and I'm Jonathan Allers, and we are here to make a, an iodine clock. And these are all materials you can get yourself very easily, either at a pharmacy or a supermarket. Nothing here is really dangerous in any way, obviously don't eat it, but other than that it's pretty safe. <laughs> So now you've seen what an iodine clock actually is. Essentially, what's going on? So what's really cool about an iodine clock is that you're taking two clear solutions, you mix them together, they stay clear, and then after a period of time, change color. Um, and that's what's really appealing about them, because it's like, how does it do that? We're actually going to divide this into three different parts where we're going to make one kind of cold in a fridge. We're going to heat one up to about 40 to 50 degrees Celsius and one in room temperature. We're going to see how that affects the speed of the reaction. So now let's get together everything we need in order to make this reaction take place. You're going to need cornstarch, vitamin C, hydrogen peroxide, iodine, and distilled water. And that's it. To make this, we're going to need two solutions and we're just going to call it solution A, solution B. So let's start with solution A. We are going to need one vitamin C tablet. We have one crushed up already. We're going to dissolve that tablet in about 130 mils of water. And volume doesn't actually matter too much, so I'm just gonna kinda eyeball that amount. Let's call that good. Put our vitamin C in there. Now, it is important that you grind up your vitamin C tablet. I recommend you get a mortar and pestle if you don't have that, put your tablet in a plastic bag and smash it with a hammer. We need iodine. And for this, we're using 12 milliliters of iodine. So that's about this amount. We're going to pour this in. And you're going to notice dark color of the iodine, kind of clear color of solution A. And as you can see, the color disappears. That's going to be important for later, and I'll explain why in a minute. That's solution A, so we'll set that to the side. Okay, so to make solution B, we're going to need 40 mils of boiling water. The only reason we're using boiling water is because cornstarch doesn't really dissolve all that well. And now to make this, we're going to need 200 milligrams of cornstarch. Now, the scale we have isn't accurate enough to do that, so about that much is about 200 milligrams. Now cornstarch doesn't really dissolve all that well, so it's going to stay a little bit cloudy, but that's okay. So now we need 100 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. And that is solution B prepared. So now we've actually made our two different solutions that when we mix them together, that's going to start the chain reaction that will eventually show you the iodine clock. So let's pour them in. These are two very kind of milkish clear solutions. When we pour it in, it is very important that they're very well mixed. So what we're going to do, and we're going to show you a different method later, we're just going to pour them back and forth. What's going on is we have two competing reactions. When we mix the iodine with the vitamin C, they reacted together to make some oxidized product from the vitamin C and iodide, which is not color. When we add the hydrogen peroxide and starch, the hydrogen peroxide reacts with the iodide to reform iodine. Now what happens is the iodine reacting with the vitamin C is a lot faster. So as soon as the hydrogen peroxide makes uh, iodide, it immediately gets turned back into iodide. Look Eventually, Eventually, you run out of vitamin C, and then you can't reform the iodide anymore, which 
means the iodine starts piling up and iodine mixes with starch to create this dark colored complex. Let's take a look at that again. We're gonna try and now do three different temperatures of this same iodine clock. We've divided up our two different solutions into three different containers. The original container, which will remain at room temperature, and then we're gonna split one pair of solutions A and B into ice water, or an ice bath, and then the other into some boiling water, just to raise the temperature. And we'll see what effect the temperature has on the reaction speed. So this little device here is just an automatic magnetic stirrer, where it's just gonna help stir the solution for us. So this is solution A, and I'm just going to add solution B to it. Here's the ice bath, if we can get them in there, and we'll let them just get to really cold temperatures. What is it? Three degrees. This is the ice bath liquid at three degrees Celsius, and we're gonna see what the time difference is in the reaction. So we're gonna start up the magnetic stirrer, and let's find out. When we added the vitamin C to the iodine, the iodine was reduced to iodide ions, and that eliminated the color. When we added solution B, that had um, hydrogen peroxide in it. So the hydrogen peroxide reacts with iodide ions to reform iodine. Now the reaction between the iodine and the vitamin C is a lot faster. So as soon as the hydrogen peroxide creates iodine, the iodine is reduced back into iodide ions, which keeps the solution colorless. After a while, we run out of vitamin C, which means the vitamin C is no longer able to re reduce the iodine into iodide. So we have iodine build up, and that's where it starts turning yellow. And then very quickly, the starch reacts with the iodine to make that blue color. And there you can see we finally got the reaction to take place. And you could see that it actually wasn't a flash change, it was a gradual change in color. This is the hot water bath, and as you can see, it's at about 66 degrees Celsius. This is going to take a very short amount of time because of the hotter solution. was really cool. Thanks for joining us, Luke. This is Destructive Creativity. If you enjoyed this episode, we have new stuff coming out every single Wednesday morning around 8 to whenever I feel like it. So see you next time. Bye!